Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Chemistry Essentials video 23. It's on ionic solids. Over the next four videos, we're going to talk about four types of solids, and what those solids are depend on where their atoms are coming from. So on the periodic table, if we were to draw a line like this, on the left side, we're going to have the metals, and on the right side, including hydrogen, we're going to have the nonmetals. And so if that solid is made up of just atoms from the metals, we call it a metallic solid. If it's only non-metals, but they're relatively small, we call those molecular solids. If they have large structures of covalently bonded atoms, we're gonna call that a covalent network solid. And in this video, we're gonna talk about ionic solids, which are a combination of metal and non-metals. And so ionic solids, remember, are gonna be made up of, or their structure is made up of ions, which are atoms that have either gained or lost electrons. They're either cations or anions. And so they're put together based on these almost static charges. And so how big those static charges are going to be based on Coulomb's law. And so if they have large charges, it's going to have a better structure or lattice energy, we call that. And if they're smaller, it's going to have greater structure. And that's because they're closer together, those charges are. And so what are some of the properties that we observe in ionic solids? Well, they have a high melting point. They have low vapor pressure. They're going to be very brittle, break readily, and they also they're going to be poor conductors of electricity in a solid form. However, if we were to melt them, they can actually conduct electricity. And if we were to dissolve them in water and create a solution, they're going to conduct electricity as well. And actually making solutions of ionic solids is relatively easy if we use something that's polar like water. And so what does an ionic solid look like? It looks like this. And so it's going to be this nice lattice and it's alternating ions. And so we're going to have anions like chlorine ion and then cations like sodium ion. And what's happened is, remember, we transferred an electron from one to another and then they're held together by almost a static charge. And this is an incredibly hard charge. And the reason why is that we, these are highly charged, these different ions, and also they're really close together. And based on Coulomb's law, opposites are going to attract. And as we decrease that radius between them, we're going to increase the charge between them. And so that's the structure. It's simply this nice lattice of ions. And so then you should understand the different properties. And so what's one big one? High melting point. Since these are attracted together with a really hard bionic bond, we're going to have high melting point. So this is salt right here. Its melting point is 801 degrees Celsius. If we look at sugar, which looks the same, but it's actually held together with covalent bonds, it's going to have a much lower melting point. They also have a really low vapor pressure. What is vapor pressure? Remember, if we put a liquid in a container, the amount of atoms that jump off and form a gas is going to be the vapor pressure as they exert vapor pressure. And so remember, the greater the forces are in that liquid or in that solid, the lower the vapor pressure is going to be. And that's based on, again, these high attractions in the ionic bonds. It's also going to be incredibly brittle. What does that mean? If we were to take a attach a uh, ionic solid and just pull it from the sides, it'll break right in half. If we were to do that to a metal, it would stretch. It's ductile. Why is it brittle? Well, all of these ions don't like being next to other ions. You can see that all the chlorine ions are as far away from chlorine as they can get. And as we start to force them towards them, they push back. And so that's why they're going to be incredibly brittle. They can't conduct electricity because we don't have a lot of free electrons around. It's simply locked into this uh, lattice. However, if we were to melt it, and so this is a lithium fluoride, beryllium fluoride melted uh, salt, it actually starts to conduct electricity. And if we add it to water, it's going to quickly break apart and it's going to be uh, an electrolyte. It's going to allow electrons to flow through it as well. Why is it that we can break down ionic solids using something like water? Remember, water is polar. It's going to have partial negative charges on the oxygen side and partial positive charges on the hydrogen side. And so you can see that all the negative sides of the water are going to be attracted to the sodium. And so they can kind of usher it away from the ionic solid. Likewise, on the chlorine ion, what we're going to have are the positive hydrogen parts are going to be attached to it. And that's going to usher it away as well. Once we remove those uh, water molecules, it goes right back to that ionic solid again. And so did you learn two things? Did you learn to show a representation of what an ionic solid looked like? And remember, it's just going to be ions that are locked together in a lattice. And did you learn the properties? The properties are simply built on the structure. And I hope that was helpful.